the suffering of Christ is the, the key, the central uh, part of that gospel. And I don't know about you, but I don't like suffering. Uh, if I can avoid suffering, I'll avoid suffering. Uh, it's, it's not something uh, that I look for or seek at all. Uh, I always look for the easiest way out, if that, uh, to be honest. Uh, and yet we have suffering, and, and yet, and yet, suffering is part of life. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, unless you take up your cross and follow me each day, you cannot be my disciple. And so as disciples of Jesus, we will have our cross to bear. But whether we're disciples or not, we will still have suffering. There will always be suffering in this world, and each of us will suffer, whether disciples of Jesus or not. I'm afraid that is just part of life. Some of the suffering we experience is our own fault. Others, it's not. And, you know, I, I know that a, a number of you are be really suffering because of this situation. You know, uh, the, the situation with being locked in, it's hard. And you may be locked in with family members or people you just don't want to be with or with people you, you find yourself falling out with, with regularly. And there's just a, a greater and greater pressure and tempers getting frayed and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, and we can end up raising our fist to God and saying, why are you doing this to me? And when we experience these things, when we experience hardship and suffering, uh, we need to go to the gospel and to the example that the two thieves give us, give us and that Jesus gives us. The two thieves respond to their situation in different ways. Both deserve to be there. They've sinned, they were thieves, and they were uh, uh, condemned justly for, for the wrong they had done. Even so, we have two ways in those thieves of dealing with the, the judgment and the suffering, the punishment that's been put on them because of their misdeeds. The one, uh, one thief curses Jesus. If you're the son of God, take us down from here, get us down, free us. We don't want to be here. And cursing Jesus demands to be freed from his suffering, although he deserves his suffering. And, you know, we can, we can, we can act like that. You know, we can do things, say things, we can behave in ways that are really, uh, which destroy ourselves. And we suffer the consequences of our own actions. And then the next thing we do is raise our fists to God, why is this happening to me? after all that we had done to cause our own problems. And so, in a way, it's just that we suffer as a consequence of our own actions. That is life. That is biology. That is uh, the, the way uh, life works, you know? Uh, and, and you can think of the only way, your, the own, your own ways uh, that you may have caused the suffering from your, for yourself. Uh, or suffering uh, caused by others. That's something else which I get to later on. But the suffering that we, for the things that we have done that have caused our own sufferings, uh, we can curse God, as the one thief did. Or we can do what the other thief did. He acknowledged his own fault in this. We deserve to be here. And he accepted his fate. He didn't fight against it as the other thief did, who didn't want to accept the suffering, even though he himself had caused it. The other priest, the other thief, accepted it. I deserve this. 
And we don't hear it in this gospel, but in one of the other gospels, we hear him say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And so for us, if we can recognize that the sufferings that we're going through are through our own fault, then it's important that we recognize that and accept the suffering. Other times, it might not be our fault. A lot of the times, it's not our fault. Uh, things happen to us. People do stuff to us, cause us grief. This situation that we're in just now, that's not my fault. That's not your fault. But it's happening to you, and you're suffering because of it. How are we to respond to that when it's not my fault? It might be an illness you're going through, not your fault. Why have I got this illness? Why am I suffering this? I didn't do anything to deserve this. And we shake our fist at God. And there we need to look to Jesus. He who is the innocent one who never committed any sin, who did not deserve to suffer, who is more innocent, who is perfectly innocent in comparison to us who are not innocent by any stretch of the imagination. And yet, he suffered and died through no fault of his own. He was condemned unjustly through no fault of his own, because of others. And so, how am I to respond to this injustice that is happening to me? We look to Jesus. And at Gethsemane, he prays to the Father, let this cup pass me by, but not my will be done, but yours, not my will be done, but yours. And it's important to recognize there are just some things that we cannot change. There are some things that we just have no control over. It is not within my power to change it. Those who were on the cross couldn't change their situation. Jesus could have. He could have called upon 12, choirs, 12 uh, legions of angels to say, yes, he could have done that, but he didn't because he had a greater purpose for us in his death. But for the rest of us and the good thief, they couldn't change their situation. And we have to recognize when the suffering we in, were in cannot be changed by anything that I do. It's outside of my control. And if I can recognize that, if I can acknowledge that, then the next thing is to accept it. Not my will be done, but yours. And accept it consciously as Jesus did. The suffering that we experience, suffering is not part of God's plan. It is not his desire for us, not his direct will. He never directly uh, wills, you shall suffer, I shall cause you pain. That is not the way God works. He allows suffering to happen to us. He permits it. He permits us to do evil that harms ourselves, that harms others. He permits nature to work the way nature works. But he never says, I will cause you suffering. But when we do suffer and we can't do anything about it, then we are to accept it as Jesus did. As if, as if for us, it were God's plan. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Lord, I accept this cross. Lord, I embrace this cross. 
through your baptism, you have entered into the mystery. Oops, if, if I can find one this cross here. Oop. Through your baptism, you have entered into the mystery of the cross, into his death and resurrection. You now dwell in him and he in you. And so you can unite your suffering, just, unjust, deserved, undeserved. You can unite it with the innocent one who did not deserve this suffering. You can unite your suffering with his on the cross. And just as his suffering and death brought redemption and freedom and eternal life to all those who look upon, who call upon his holy name, just as this is his suffering and death did that, you can unite your sufferings with his so that your suffering can become redemptive. You can offer your suffering to the Lord for the sake of your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your mother, your, your, your father, your uncle, your aunt, somebody, your friend, your neighbor, whoever it is that you love and who has asked for your prayers, you can offer not only your prayers, but in union with Jesus, your sufferings. That your suffering can now have meaning, purpose, power. And as you lay down your will, as the people laid down their cloaks, as they laid down their green uh, branches before the Lord, as you lay down your will, your life before the Lord, entering into his death, then you will know peace. Then you will be brought to the resurrection with him as he rises. We will all suffer. There's no doubting that. There's no changing that. The question is, how am I going to suffer? How am I going to respond to it? Do I fight it? Do I battle it? Do I rebel against it and shake my fist at God? Or do I unite myself with Jesus? Not my will, but yours be done. Letting go of the anger and the rebellion, humbling myself before the Lord, giving myself and my suffering to the Lord that he might use it for the redemption, for the saving of others. Amen.